Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. I am Teresa Harper, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll see if I can get this up. And then I can see your comments, see who's on. And say hello. All right. So go ahead and let me know when you're here. As you can tell by the product in front of us, we are going to be using the Cactus Cuties stamp set tonight. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> Long time no see. Hello, Cynthia. Thanks for joining. Hello, Mary. Lynette, hello again. All right. So this um, bundle that we are using tonight is courtesy of my upline, Melissa Zesson. She gifted it to me. So I'm so excited to have it. I've been looking at this since the pre-order. And um, I finally have it in my hot little hands. Unfortunately, this is not one of the bundles that have carried over into the new 2022-2023 annual catalog. So, if you like what you see tonight, I would get it ordered because you won't see it in the new catalog. Melissa is awesome and very, very generous. I love having her as an upline. She is a spectacular person. She is beautiful both inside and out. All right. So, uh, page 66 of the January to June mini catalog is where you'll find this bundle. And it's very affordable at $31.50. Be sure and uh, use that bundle pricing, though, so that you can save 10% on the punch and 10% off of the individual prices of the stamp set. All right. So let's go ahead and, well, I don't want to set those too far aside because we need those. Okay, so the way this is going to go tonight is I have three cards and I'm hoping to get through them all, but I'm not going to put them all together for you completely. I've got quite a few techniques I want to show you. Um, so we are going to jump right in, get that going. Our first card uses Mint Macaron, Pear Pizzazz, Mossy Meadow, Sahara Sand, Balmy Blue, and let me find my Calypso Coral in a different box. It's also going to use Calypso Coral. Okay, so those are the six ink pads that we'll be using. Now, I have pre done quite a bit of this card for you because basically I just want to show you a few things. We're going to start with a white card base and of course this is an A2 five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. This card will be in landscape and I've pre-done the um, card the basic focal, focal image layer in that this is basically, uh, I showed you guys how to do that inking technique last week, and this is basically that card, the card that I did last week. So it has the balmy blue pear pizzazz and Sahara sand, and then to that I added um, in mint macaron, the little trio of pluses in the biggest wish stamp set but you could use whatever image you had that's small that takes up a little bit of room we are going to be using an item off the clearance rack and last time I checked which was yesterday this was still available this uh, designer series paper is from the <clears throat> 
Flowering Cactus Product Medley Refill. In this clearance rack refill pack, you get eight felt pieces that have flowers and things. Um, you get Calypso Coral and Highland Heather, and you get four sheets of each, and they have these different size flowers and they're pre-cut so all you have to do is punch them out okay so you get those you get 10 yards each of the linen thread and calypso coral linen thread plus you get 48 sheets of the flowering cactus designer series paper okay and the coordinating colors in here are calypso coral coral highland heather mint macaron mossy meadow pear pizzazz and basic white and you get i think eight sheets of each one one yeah it's hard to tell because i've already cut through quite a quite a bit okay so I don't want you to not check the clearance rack because this particular set goes really well with our Cactus Cuties bundle. So we're going to be using this designer series paper tonight and this is where I pretty much got my color um, palette from. Okay, hello Jennifer, thank you for sharing. Hello Laura, in case I didn't say hello already. All right, so from this, we're going to be using this piece of designer series paper. And this is why I pulled in those um, X's, basically, because they match this designer series paper. So this particular piece of designer series paper is cut at five and an eighth, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. Okay, and this piece is three and three quarters by five. Now, the Hope Your Day is on point, I stamped in Mossy Meadow, um, and that comes from the Cactus Cuties. Okay, so really at this point, all we need to do is add this to our card base. And if you don't remember how I did that blending, you can easily go back and check out last week's Facebook Live, or you can watch the replay over on YouTube at KNT Designs by Teresa. But I think you have to put in Teresa Harper first in order to find me, and then go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification button. And it will tell you when I upload new videos. So we are going to add this to our card base. So, so far, we're liking it. For the inside, I've pre-stamped. And this is another piece of that designer series paper. I stamped the... Um, cactus here and these two images in mint macaron and then I uh, stamped and punched out and I'll show you how that works one of the this flower pot in Sahara sand and stamped the little hello from the stamp set in uh, mossy meadow so this will go to the inside of our card and then that is finished Okay, matching envelope, another one of the images in mint macaron and then the flower image in Calypso Coral for our envelope with a piece of designer series paper that is one inch. I saw this Cynthia, uh, Cynthia actually, who's on here, showed us this on um, scrapbooking on Saturday, how just to use a small portion of a piece of designer series paper. So I just adhered that and then trimmed around the edge. So rather than using the two and a quarter inch piece, I just used a one inch piece. Beautiful. I love that idea and thank you, Cynthia. 
I love how we can all learn from each other. Okay, so that's that at this point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp some images that we need for our um, card. And some of them I have stamped, but I'm gonna stamp the ones that we need to punch out with our punch. Um, as you can tell, this punch will punch out this pot, this humpy cactus. I don't know what this, this particular shape of cactus and it punches out these little arm branches and this flower. The rest of these images, you have to fussy cut. And I have already stamped and fussy cut those so you don't have to watch. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna look at our punch. And we're going to stamp this image in mint macaron in the same orientation as our punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up. And I'm just gonna stamp that down. Okay. And then that will just go in our punch like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and punch that now. And then I'm gonna turn this around. And I'm going to grab the little piece that goes on that. And again, I'm gonna check my punch and I need to punch this upside down. So, and I need two of these. So I'm going to punch one. And then I'll stamp again. And we'll punch another. And we'll get us some confettis. This is the easiest way to do this. Okay, and then we're going to trim off. I'm gonna to try to do my, at least one of my little flowers on this. So we're gonna put away our mint macaron and I'm going to grab the Calypso Coral. And I'm gonna bring this punch back in here. This one's a little tricky. So what I suggest is that you put your piece of paper in from the side. Take a look at that. And then get your stamp and ink it up. And then you're going to stamp that in an angle like so. And then you should be able to put this in here and get your little flower. Okay, and we did that all on that scrap of paper. All right, so we need one more of those. So again, I'm taking another scrap of paper and I'm gonna stick that in there. And I'm just gonna take a look at how I need to make that happen. Whoops. And then punch that out. Okay, and if I do those first, especially that deep reaching one, then I don't have to worry about stamping an image and then cutting it with my punch. Okay, so what we have left then for the punch is our little... Um, pot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this scrap off. I'm going to be able to put this in like this. So if I just lay my paper just like this in this orientation and grab my pot and see Sahara sand, 
Then I can ink this up, stamp it down, and then I can slide this into my punch, and I've got my pot. Okay, so I think that is all the pieces that we need for the moment that I haven't already cut to save some time. I've got quite a few techniques that I wanted to show you. So here are my additional pieces. I stamped another pot. This one in Calypso Coral. I stamped this particular image in Mossy Meadow. Uh, this one I did again in um, Sahara Sand. And I'm not sure why my computer timed out on me. Oh, hello, Cher. Oh, a barrel cactus, the first one I punched. Okay, good. Good to know. Barrel cactus. It kind of looks like a barrel. So that would make a lot of sense. Welcome. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces. Um, except I think I lost one of my little... Whoops. Might have to stamp and repunch that little... Booger, I think he ran away. Okay, well, let's do that. We've got some more paper here. It'll be rather quick. Let's just, unless somebody sees it. All right, so I'm going to punch it upside, or I'm going to stamp it upside down again at the bottom of my cardstock so I can slide that into my punch easily. I definitely need two of those. All right, there we go. Okay, now hopefully he doesn't run away again. Okay. So then all we're going to do is start assembling our cacti here. Oh, and actually this was supposed to be balmy blue. Well, let's... Not paying attention to my sample. I made that one balmy blue to coordinate with <clears throat> the blue in our supposed sky. All right, well, let's go ahead. We'll do that again. And I'm just going to turn this up to the side. Stamp that down. And we'll punch that in balmy blue. Okay. Now we have all of our pieces and we're ready to assemble. Okay. So we're just going to take and stick this cactus here. Like so. And then we'll put... This one here. We'll add our barrel cactus with our two little ears here. I'm gonna show you how I did this one. Cause I would I did this one kind of tricky. Because I wanted these to stay and stay pretty easy. So I'm just going to flip them over. I'm going to grab a tiny piece of tear and tape here. And I'm going to attach them. But I want them to look like ears. Not that they would out in the wild, but I did want them to look that way. OK, 
okay? So now those are attached and they're not going to come off and I'm good, okay? And then I'm going to attach my little Calypso coral ears on here, or flowers on here, with just a drop of liquid glue. Let me grab my silicone mat because I know me. And I will have glue. So the easiest way to do this is to put a dot of glue on the cactus. And then add your flower. And set that aside. You're going to add Stampin' Dimensionals to all of this. Put it together. Add your Stampin' Dimensionals. We're going to put it on our card. Okay. And then you will have a finished card. That looks like this after you add some of the retiring silver and clear epoxy essentials. These are in the annual catalog. And as of yesterday, they were still available. Last night, actually. Okay. So there you have our finished card. All right. So there is project number one. All right, let's clear this out. And the, yep, I'm good there. There we go. Okay, let's set those aside. Go ahead and keep this up here for later when we need to. Okay, I know I need Calypso Coral later, so let's these in here and we will move on to the next project. Okay, cute. Thank you. All right, so our next project uses the painted labels dies and we are using this label and then we're cutting we're cutting this in white basic white and then we're going to cut two of these in highland heather and of course i've already done that just save us some time and that's the painted label size you will find those carrying over into the new annual catalog okay So again, we have a basic white card. This one has very little stamping, actually. It's our card base. Then I've taken the Painted Texture 3D Embossing Folder and a basic or a Highland Heather um, cut at four by five and a quarter. We're gonna add that to our card front. So we can go ahead and do that now. Let's get that done. Okay, let's go ahead and put, this is a pretty textured piece, so I'm gonna put this on with liquid glue. This is one of those embossing folders that looks equally good on both sides. Okay, so we'll just center that up. Put that down. Okay, then we're gonna pull a piece of three and three quarter by five inch white, basic white card stock. And we're going to take some strips of that designer series paper. Now I left those at six inches. And what I did with these is I took my little trimmer and you could use your paper trimmer. I'm gonna use this. 
and I put these in at an angle so that I have, well, maybe you can see better on the paper trimmer. I just put these in the trimmer so that they're at an angle. So I have a smaller at the bottom and a larger at the smaller at the top, larger at the bottom to start. Okay. So you're going to do this twice. So whichever way you started with, then you're going to turn it the other way. Okay. And you're going to do that with all of your patterns. Okay. And you're going to need enough to cover I have five patterns is what I have okay and I've already started this because I didn't want to keep keep you here all night so I just started with the straight edge of my paper I put the first piece right up straight on the edge okay and then I used my next piece that was facing the other direction and put that on, okay? And then I'm just gonna keep alternating. So if I have this one, which is wider at the top or smaller at the top and wider at the bottom, this one I need to turn so that I have the wider at the top and the smaller at the bottom. And then I need to decide where at I want this to go. Do I want it to be narrower? Okay. And I'm going to snip off a bit here and snip off a bit here. And then I'm just going to run my seal adhesive and find my tweezers. I can't do this without tweezers. I'm just not talented enough. My fat fingers get in the way. And I'm trying to leave a sort of even border. Okay, and then I'm going to go for my next one. And this one needs to go this way. So I'm just gonna snip here. And you don't have to snip it till later. Um, but I don't want a bunch of excess glue going on my trimmer. Because we're going to have to trim this. Okay, and then I'll just put this down. And then my cactus is going to go like that. And that's pretty much going to take up the rest of my paper here. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got in a wide enough spot at the bottom to cover that. Now, each time you do this, this is going to turn out differently, depending on how you cut your strips. Okay, so now I have that. And I'm going to take my snips and I'm just going to run along the edge of my cardstock and snip those off. Clean those edges up. And almost done here. Mostly because I don't want all this yuck on my trimmer. It's much easier to clean my scissors than my trimmer. Okay, let's get all these sticky pieces out of the way. 
so I don't stick them to my card. All right. Now you could leave this just like this. Okay, but I wanted this to be a little bit smaller. So I'm actually going to cut this down to three and a half. And I'm going to make sure I've got double straight edges. So I'm going to flip it so that everything has a nice clean side. This is my original card side that I started with. Okay, and now I need this. It won't fit in this trimmer. Oh, it doesn't work the way I need it to. So if that was three and a half, then I need this to be four and three quarters. So I'm gonna trim a little bit on that side and then trim a little bit on this side. Now I have all nice, clean edges. You don't have to do that. You could leave it just like it was, but I chose to trim mine up, okay? So now I'm gonna take some linen thread, which is included in that um, cactus flowering cactus product medley. You get 10 yards two, three, I'm gonna wrap that three times around. And I'm gonna leave myself enough to tie a bow. I'm gonna tighten this all up. And tie my, actually, I'm gonna tie a knot. Well, I am if I can get that to hold on here. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tie a bow because now I don't have to worry about that bow. Okay. All right. So then we can trim up our ends. And we can attach this to our card base, but not quite yet because we want to make sure that our bow is exactly where we want it. So we're going to take that die that we have and we're going to grab from the so Simply Succulent stamp set the thanks. I'm going to stamp that in Mossy Meadow. Right about here. Okay. And then We're going to take those two pieces that we cut from the painted labels dies in the Highland Heather. And again, I'm gonna grab my silicone mat and I'm gonna run a thin bead of glue along that solid portion. And then I'm gonna center this and it fits this perfectly from corner to corner, the inner corners on that tag. 
And then we're going to repeat that on the bottom. So that we have this. Now to this, we're going to, I've fussy cut out of the designer series paper, one of the cacti. I'm gonna add this and this to my label. And then I'm gonna pop that up after I figure out, I'm gonna, I need to move this. If you need to move your uh, linen thread, just gently bend up your cardstock and slide it. And it will slide for you until you have your bow where you need it to be. We'll set this on here with the dimensionals. Okay. And we'll add this to the card front with stamp and seal, just like that. Okay. And here is our finished project. Okay. And then for the inside, I didn't do my usual layer. I just took a piece of the designer series paper, a strip. and added that to the inside of my card. And really I set that there, then added my cactus in there and then glued everything in. I didn't use a layer this time, but if you were using a layer, you could do the same thing on your layer. Okay, so there is our finished project. And for the envelope, we just have some stamped cactus. All right, so there is project number two. Completed. All right. Okay, let's move a few things aside and we will grab project number three. This one, we're going to pull in our die cut machine, do a little blending, and we're going to start with a layer of cardstock. This is a quarter sheet of cardstock, four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, so we're going to bring in a scrap sheet of paper and we're going to do a little bit of ink blending, but we're going to do it a little bit differently than we did last week. Okay, and I need to double check to make sure this is four and a quarter. Yep, I'm good. By five and a half. All right. So I'm just going to put some temporary adhesive down there. And for this one, we are using soft succulent Highland Heather Evening Evergreen and Calypso Coral. But as far as blending colors go, we're only going to use three. Okay, we're gonna start with the Highland Heather. And hang on guys, I set my blends clear. Oh, I set them behind me. Just good, I can reach those. So we're going to start with the Highland Heather. Oh, thanks, Jennifer, and 
Lynette and Cynthia. Thank you for the very nice comments. Okay, I'm going to dab off. And this is going to be pretty random. Let me get my card sample here. When I made my card sample, some of it didn't come out quite as dark as I would like. So I'm going to go a little bit heavier on my colors this time. So I have a little bit more depth. And then I'm going to come down here to the bottom. And I'm going to cut this down, so I need to keep that in mind, not to put all of my color at the edge. Otherwise, I will cut it off. Okay, so next I'm moving to Calypso Coral, which I need to put a new, my Calypso, this is the old style pad and it broke last night on me. Oh well, I'm not going to fuss with that. I'm just going to grab my ink blending brush, get the Calypso Coral, and then I'm going to go down in this opposite corner. If you get a, a spot like that, it's not going to matter. This one is very forgiving. Okay, and then we'll just put a little bit more up here. All right. I'm going to set this totally out of the way. Otherwise, I will have Calypso Coral everywhere. I'm already getting it all over my fingers fix that pad and order a new one. Okay. Now I'm going to take my soft succulent and I am going to fill in the rest of my paper. And you're probably thinking, gosh, that looks terrible. I want a little bit more color on there because I don't want it to get lost against our background. Okay. Good variation in color there. So we will be happy with that. Okay, now we're going to peel this off. And I'm going to clean off that excess temporary. Okay. And then on the back of this, the non-colored side, I'm taking a piece of our adhesive sheets. And you get 12 of these, they're six by 12 adhesive sheets in this pack, okay? So I'm gonna take this adhesive sheet and they're perforated here. I've cut this, by the way, uh, slightly smaller. So this is four to an eighth by five and three eighths because I didn't want to fight the straightness of the paper. So I'm going to take off one. It has three of those. I'm going to take off one of the backings and I'm going to try and center this and I'm going to put that down and then I'm going to take my take your pick tool and I'm going to pull the second sheet 
And then I'm going to gently roll that down. And then I'm going to do that one more time with my take your pick. And if you bend that back, the edge usually pops up just a titch. Just enough for you to grab it. And then I'm going to smooth that right down. And then I'm going to give that a good burnish. Now, what that in essence do has done is make this piece of cardstock a sticker sheet. And that's going to be important in just a moment. We're going to bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. The big boss. And we're going to take the potted succulent dies and in this die set, which you will find on page, where did I put my sticky note? I think it's 166 of the annual catalog. You get 13 dies, but you get this one fabulous die. Not that they aren't all fabulous, but this one's extra fabulous. And we're gonna take that die and we're going to set this on top of our colored cardstock. And then I wanted some extra assurance that that wasn't going anywhere. And I used a quarter sheet of cardstock because as you can tell, parts of this are very, very close to the edge. So I'm just gonna take a piece of post-it tape. You could use a post-it note. And I don't want this to move. So I'm gonna put a post-it note on either side. And then what I found easiest to cut this die. Now remember, you're not only going through the cardstock, but you are also going through the adhesive back, the adhesive sheet. Not only does this have adhesive, but it also has a release paper. So normally we would put this in like this and run it through. With my machine, I'm putting it upside down and I'm putting my cutting plate on the top rather than the bottom. I'm gonna put it in at an angle. It's always best at an angle. And then I'm gonna crank this through. Okay. Then I'm gonna pick this side up and I'm gonna slant it the other direction, put my top plate back on, and I'm gonna roll it back through. I'm gonna flip my cutting mat. I'm going to adjust that one more time slightly and I'm gonna roll it back through. Okay. And then I'm gonna take a look to see if it looks like it cut everything. And I might be a little concerned right here in the center. So I am going to do that one more time because I would rather be safe than sorry. And by putting those post-it tapes on there, I know nothing has shifted. Okay, so we should be in good shape now. And everything should pretty much just fall out of there. Move those to the side. And let's grab our dye brush. And we'll set that down on our mat. Push that out.
Okay, and those are all coming out. So they've all cut. Some of them are not cut completely through the release paper, and that's okay. That almost looks like it didn't cut. Nope. Okay. So we need to run that one more time, I think. I'm going to, just to be safe. But remember, I haven't done anything to remove my post-it tape. So I'm going to flip my plate again. Actually, I'm going to flip my bottom and top plates. Put that in at an angle. And run it through. I really do not want this to not cut. And of course, when you know, I put it where I can't reach the handle. Okay. Now I should be perfect for sure. All right. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. So we are going to go ahead. Got a card base in Evening Evergreen. I'm going to fold that card base up. of my paper. Okay. All right. Set that aside. And now I'm gonna bring in my little trimmer because I don't want this to be this wide. I want to trim this up a little bit more evenly and I want to do it before I take that backing paper off, of course. So trim that down. Actually, I'm gonna trim that down a little bit more. All right. And then I'm going to trim this down a bit until my edges look about even all the way around. Then again, before I pull my backing, I'm going to make sure that I have it. And this needs to be trimmed a little on each end. This kind of gets... Your paper gets pressed out a bit from the die. So I want to make sure that I'm going to fit on here before I pull my backing. Okay. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and trim this up just a tiny bit more on the side. And even that up a tiny bit. There. All right. And I'm happy with that. Okay. So now this is going to go right on my evening evergreen. Okay. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to pop that release backing off. And I'm going to pray this works as well as it did last night and takes off all those excess pieces with the backing paper. Oh, of course it's gonna be a stinker now that I'm on camera. Oh, seriously. I didn't have any trouble getting to that backing yesterday.
Let me just take my finger. Get that edge. Come on, there we go. No, I think I actually took the cardstock. Come on. Why does it always work that way when you're on camera? I had no trouble doing this yesterday whatsoever. That popped right off of there. There. Did I get it or did I split? Nope, I got the backing. There we go. Okay. And here comes the rest of those pieces just like it was supposed to do okay now I'm going to take this and I'm going to very gently start on one end and center that up and lay that down and smooth it down and look at the result. It's a little time consuming, as you can tell, but it is well worth the effort. Okay, so then to finish this card off, I've cut from the tailor-made tags. I cut one, one of the largest squared corners in white and the other one in Highland Heather. I stamped the thanks in Evening Evergreen to match our card stock. And these are going to go on our card like this. Okay. So we're just going to put those like that. And I've pre-cut all of our pieces. Before we put this down, we're going to add um, the D-ring that's also in the tailor-made tags. Just gonna put just a small amount of liquid glue at the front and the back. I don't wanna get carried away. And the flat side goes at the top of the tag. Okay. And I'm going to take these and I'm going to line up the holes and stagger them. Okay. And I want to make these one. So I'm just going to take this and in this corner I'm going to put a little bit of stamp and seal. Line those up, and that's going to go on my card like that. Okay. Then I'm going to add, I've already stamped and die cut from the Simply Succulents, uh, the potted, the tin pot. Okay, and I've colored this with dark and light gray granite. And in the very center, I took and curled the edges. And then I put three mini dimensionals. Okay. And I'm going to glue three edges, the three, the two sides and the bottom. Just a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm going to leave the backings on those uh, mini dimensionals. And I'm going to pop this centered between the sentiment and the side of our die. And I'm just going to take my bone folder and seal those edges down. Okay, 
that gives us a 3D effect on our pot. Okay, to the inside of this then we're gonna add two of these little leafy green things, which are from the potted succulent dyes. Just gonna put those in there. And because we left those glue dots intact, we're able to slide that right in, okay? Then using the same technique that I did on um, those other barrel cactus, I've stamped and die cut one large and three small, and then out of the designer series paper, I've cut a couple of the uh, flowers and glued them on added a calypso coral bow, three iridescent rhinestones, and there is our finished project. All right. Now, for the inside of my card, let me get all this out because we're going to need this. but without any pieces. Excuse me. Okay. Let's tap that on the edge of my desk there and get any final little pieces out. going to take a piece of white cardstock for the inside that's three and five eighths by three and or by four and seven eighths I'm going to get out my scrap paper again okay and this time I'm going to glue this down temporary adhesive I'm going to place my die over my cardstock. I'm going to place a little post it tape to hold that steady. Okay. And again, I'm going to take my blending brush. But this time I'm going to use a little bit of, no, I'm, did I use the, no, I used the soft succulent. And I'm just going to take and go right over the top of my die. And I'm just going to use that as a stencil. in the bottom right and the upper left. Pull my post-it tape and my die. Now I can just take a baby wipe and wipe that off. Okay. And then we'll stamp an inside sentiment. Also from Simply Succul Succulents, you make the ordinary extraordinary and add that to the inside of our card. And I did that same technique on my envelope. Okay. So there's our third and final project tonight. I hope you enjoyed those. And... Let's bring those projects back in so you can see them all together. Let me clean up. You would not believe the disaster that is in my room at the moment. <sighs> okay, so we've got that one. And here is our strip technique. And finally, our ink blending technique all with the Cactus Cuties and Simply Succulents along with the Coordinating Potted Succulents dies. Okay, I 
hope everybody enjoyed those. I sure enjoyed making them for you. Uh, thank you guys for all the hearts. I love that. Thanks so much. Okay, I will see you back here again next Tuesday night for another Tuesday Night Live. And we will be working with some new product and a new technique. Good night, everybody. Thank you.